The custodian newspaper says Africa Afrobarometer report. Police judges, MPs, most corrupt, army religious leaders, uh, presidency most trusted. Give me four years, uh, Akufuado, to voters. That's a very passionate uh, appeal there. Government spends 373.9 million Ghana cities on premix subsidy. Ghana records bumper fish harvest. The Daily Statesman, Farmers Day 2019, thanks to those who feed us. That's on page 6, 7, 12, and 15 of the Daily Statesman. Happy birthday in, uh, happy day in Ningo Pram Pram. President cuts the sword for $70 million sea defense project. Tema uh, in Pakadan, rail line ready by August. The business finder, three new bauxite mining concessions planned. Government to own 30% stake in new mine uh, refinery and smelter. Urban electrification, Ghana has 95% coverage, ranked second in West Africa. And rethink strategy behind Cocoa Board, Kofi Bentel, tells the government. The Ghanaian Times, Parliament applauds one constituency, one AstroTurf initiative, Coleman for sports development. That's the uh, AstroTurf, my own brother, uh, Coleman there. President Kat sought for 300 million Ningo Pram Pram Sea Defense Project War and uh, Giardek shortlist 14 COIs for integrated aluminium industry. Fight against corruption, money laundering, confiscate ill gotten wealth from corporates after jail term. Attorney General uh, has been speaking there, Gloria Kufu. My guest this morning is Mr. Elvis Bota. He wants to represent the people of Kaleo. Uh, Nadoli Kaleo in the forthcoming uh, 2020 elections and beyond and he is here on the ticket of the NPP. Hitherto he was uh, Deputy Communications Director of the NPP. Elvis, welcome. Good yeah. to see you. It's been Good a while. You. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, we are managing life. Hope going. you are doing well too. I'm uh, actually Deputy National Organizer. <laughs> <laughs> so you are holding on to both positions. Yes, I thought sir. your party had a definite decision on that, that where well, you cannot hold a party position and still aspire to go to power. No, on the, on the contrary, the party holds on to the view that uh, you can hold on to a party position. Okay. Just that in the period of the primary elections, <coughs> usually what the tradition is that you recuse yourself from the execution of your official executive powers okay. until after the elections. Win or lose, you get back to office and continue work. Okay. Yes. Okay, so uh, yesterday, the uh, Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation had a, a sort of a press briefing. It was privileged to be there. And they outlined their plans towards the mining of uh, uh, bauxite, which will be converted into aluminium, and what we stand to gain as a country from that. I should like for you to listen quickly to Mr. Michael Ansign, the CEO of GearDeck. When we return, we'll have a conversation about that. Uh, CSOs have been asking for government to back down on mining uh, the, the bauxite deposits in the Atiwa forest. But they say, well, let's go on. Yidahiri and all of that. Take a look at this. The Ghana Integrated Aluminum Development Corporation, GADEC, was established by an Act of Parliament in August 2018 with the mandate to develop and promote an integrated aluminum industry in Ghana. The chief executive officer of GADEC says feasibility studies have shown that Nyinehini has 700 million tons of bauxite, Chebi has 160 million tons and Awaso 60 million tons, making it an estimated total of 900 million tons. He indicated that his outfit, in collaboration with other state agencies, would undertake responsible mining. The mining areas are at least 10 to 15 kilometers away from where these rivers take their sources from. Number two is that the practices that we're talking about will ensure that this does not happen. We are bringing in companies that will sign up to the various values and principles and standards that we want. So all of this will make sure that we build a community of companies who are working with one purpose, which is to protect our environment, which is to protect our flora and fauna, which is to bring in best practice. And that's what we will aim to do. That's our objective. That's what we're driving. He further indicated that when GADEC starts full operation, over 35,000 direct and indirect jobs will be created along the value chain. 
the expectation of these communities that there's an opportunity for us to bring an economic activity and business to their environment or to their communities that will create jobs. Allied to that is the need for us to be responsible in how this is done. And the third thing is that we have to do this with the communities, not to the communities, as has been done in the past. So our community engagement process all around talking to them, understanding what the issues are, getting their feedback, and designing programs that are relevant to them. Gaidek envisages to have four mines which will produce a total of 10 to 20 million tons of bauxite annually. Welcome and you can always join us with your thoughts and comments 02021 We'll also be joined by Mr. James Kwabena Bonfe. He is the Acting General Secretary of the Convention People's Party. James, welcome. How are you doing? Thank you, Johnny. Great. Absolutely. Good to have We're you just here. Uh, about to have a conversation uh, of the new three new bauxite mining concessions announced yesterday by JADEC. Chief Executive Officer, uh, Mr. Michael Ansar, is, is, is told journalists yesterday that the um, two or three new refineries with a combined capacity between four and six million metric tons of alumina refined bauxite are expected to be set up close to the mining communities and he says that look if you're looking at the totality of the etiwa forest the conversation about whether or not the water bodies will be affected we're just talking about some between some 12 and 14 percent of a small space that will be mined and the rest uh, there's a distance of about 10 kilometers and another 15 kilometers far apart from the water bodies. And so there's no cause for alarm. In the meantime, the government will have 30% of the shares in it and over 30,000 jobs will be created in the whole value chain. Uh, and then you will have some more jobs created in, in excess of that. This certainly is good news, is it not? I would not rush to pronounce that as good news mm. as somebody who's worked in the advocacy mm. um, with respect to extractive sector governance. Mm. Um, the picture would always be presented as cozy, beautiful, and good. But it is important that we are made aware okay. of the environmental impact assessment mm. and, and also the health impact analysis. I asked a question about that. Uh, sorry to cut to you, but uh, Mr. Ansar said, I asked a question about environmental yeah. impact access yeah. and also about the disconnect usually you find between mining communities and the companies that come there to mine. He says, well, there are rules, the rules from Minerals Commission, Environmental Protection Agency, all the other agencies, and they will follow strictly with it. In addition to that, which is why he says, the portion where the mining will happen and in fact, if you look at the depth of uh, bauxite mines, it's not as deep as gold mines and diamond mines. And it's far off from there, 10, 15 kilometers apart. So they are safe. That's what he says. You see, the environmental impact assessment would speak to this argument he's advancing, yeah. that the distance is acceptable. Yeah. We have received these arguments all over the years. Mm -hmm. When, um, I, I mean, Ashanti Goldfields right. was mining Nobuasi, mm -hmm. subsequently it, became, uh, it became, um, um Anglo Gold Ashanti. Mm -hmm. Newmont, when they were coming, mm -hmm. we, have heard, uh, we have heard all of those things. Mm -hmm. But today, the environmental impact analysis that have been done mm -hmm. and the health impact conducted by the Ghana Health Service, their ethical committee, mm. have shown that people living in these mining com uh, communities mm. are at health risk. That food produced in these mining areas are contaminated and are poisonous. Mm. So, Johnny, I will not, on the basis of what I already know, mm -hmm. going on in the mining extractive sector, the oil sector, what were we not told? Mm. What were we not told about lessons learned from the Norwegian, Nigerian examples mm -hmm. when we were going into the oil, um, you know, uh, oil exploitation in this country? We were told all the goodies, all the beautiful things. Mm. But to what end? What are we getting out of that? You know what? No. Um, <laughs> one eminent chief or renowned chief in our country mm -hmm. 
uh, Osajifu Amwatu for the penny, right. uh, the, the, the second Osajifu, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. said something that I may want to refer to. He said that if our natural resources mm -hmm. are not going to be exploited to our advantage, mm -hmm. they will not go west if we allow them to stay in there. Don't forget, we are going to mine a forest mm -hmm. which Conservation International mm -hmm. has researched mm -hmm. and established that there are 120 new species of, I mean, uh, insects and plants unknown to science. Mm -hmm. Johnny, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a revelation of Conservation International's sponsored exercise that was uh, uh, that that was published mm -hmm. in 2006, if I, okay. my, my memory serves me right. right. I have a copy of that report. Mm. 120 new species unknown to science well, in that forest. Well, but it, yesterday also, a video from the Jara forest, and he also spoke about the Amazon forest. Yeah. And the fact that, look, these are uh, <coughs> special like the Tiwa forest, <coughs> but they have also been mined there, and the conservation <coughs> has been done in such a way that it didn't destroy the eco uh, ecosystem in there and so there's no cause for alarm See, when he, when i hear them talk like that mm. i wonder what they are speaking to the reality in our country is that epa mm. which is supposed to be the regulatory i mean um, authority as far as environmental issues are concerned mm. has been sitting on their jobs and sleeping how, how, the minerals how, commission that, that's not fair to the epa my goodness i am talking about fact companies have abused their environmental um, um what do you call it <laughs> contractual times with the people. Relations with them. Mm. Okay? And they have gone free. I have fought on behalf of communities. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking out of the, the blues as, as something I don't know. My civil society organization, Youth for Action Ghana, mm. has fought consistently on behalf of mining communities across the country. So you're saying that so I'm saying, these are just sugar-coated words that are being pushed to us to allow for, for mining to happen? You need to understand how the mining and the extractive sector giants operate. They are good at the PR. And of course, governments and state institutions are in a rush to call for investments. The truth of the matter is that the... Uh, uh, what, um, Sino Hydro? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm making reference to a report. OECD report. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Has established that <laughs> companies that are operating, mining companies that are operating in the global south mm -hmm. or the, the, the third world countries mm -hmm. have exploited us to the advantage of their nations and to the disadvantage but, but of their But they're people. saying that there's just about 10, 15% of what is in there is what is going to be mined. The rest remain ours Johnny, what, underground. Johnny, it is not about it's not about what is going to be mined. Okay. It is about what happens with the process of mining and its incidental destructive tendencies. And mind you, mm. it is going to change the economic mm -hmm. life of the people, the communities living there. Right. Research have shown that prostitution, sexually transmitted diseases, mm. poverty become ripe. And the, 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 the uh, what do you call it? The disconnect mm. between the rich and the poor, the margin, why this? And, and, I, and I've told in you all that these, I, I, in, I, all, in I, all these I mining those communities. Questions. Mr. Ansan says, look, rest your mind because we're coming to do something different. You still have doubts? He should tell me what they have done in Takwa, what they have done in Pristia, what they have done in Kuni Valley, what they have done in Bibiani, mm. what they are doing in Yanfo, what they are doing in Kenya. Say, to convince me mm. that we should have trust in them. Okay. Well, as far as I'm joy. concerned, it's part of the, the I mean, the, the, the attempt mm. to continue widening the gap between the haves and the have-nots. Okay. Mr. Koyo Chumbuafo has also joined us. Uh, Chumbuafo, I beg your pardon, has also joined us. The former executive secretary of the Free Zone Sport. Chief, welcome. Thank you. Thank How are you, you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. Good to see you. Good I saw you see. nodding to some of the things that James was talking about. I come to you, but let me go to Elvis first. Elvis, so James says you have got the PR right. Uh, you are talking to us, sugar-coated words, but we have no cause to believe you because of what has happened in other places where mining has been done and how the wide gap has come and how the distraction has gone on and how we have not been able to repair the earth 
and even compensate the people appropriately. So let us not rush into this. What say you? Uh, well, uh, he's entitled to a fair opinion on this. I believe that when it comes to matters of you know, critical importance, mm. in respect of the national development, it is only appropriate that we take into consideration varied views, varied expectations of you know, people from the broader scope of our masses. And uh, not just listening to them, but you know, extract advisory notes and seek to incorporate same in the conduct of you know, public affairs. I believe that it is a path we can charter to make progress. Mm. Uh, but that is not to say mm -hmm. that the fact that risk looms mm -hmm. around a particular consideration you know, is a substitute for a decision not to do same. Mm. I say this because uh, looking at the arguments advanced, mm. very apt moral arguments with examples that seem to suggest that you know global south countries as he mentioned mm -hmm. you know mainly developing nations mostly are at the detriment of exploitation what we may see as you know a new colonialist tendency mm -hmm. to still you know undermine the growth space of africa in mm -hmm. particular and so i do not immediately run away from arguments that are advanced in this direction uh, having said this suffice it to be understood also that you don't say for these reasons mm. you do not engage in activities of you know mineral extractions in a manner economically that will yield dividends to the benefit of society so it is a dependency issue mm. where in fact you must trade off what you have or a certain percentage of it in order to have what you don't actually the, have these mining so communities if, yes uh, and how impoverished some of them are in fact, most of them, I must say, are um, must prick our minds to ask the questions James is asking. Absolutely, the questions I, I don't yesterday. disagree with that. And, and, and the laid down to look, we're talking about thirty thousand jobs or ex excess in excess of that in in the space. If we start the refineries, the speciality and the qualification, the competence and experience. Do the people around the Atiwa forest have that <laughs> such that they will have the wherewithal to benefit and say, I have actually earned from it? Or they are looking at the crumbs that will fall off after the big meal has been eaten? So basically, I think I was advancing an argument that would have generally taken into consideration mm. these concerns you have just raised. So if I may continue, you realize that we've gotten examples of the engagement of various companies mainly from the diaspora that come in for the purpose of such mineral engagement. And research have actually proven that the extractive sector, not only in Ghana but in most developing countries, have suffered tremendously mm -hmm. to the extent that apart from ecological considerations, apart right. from environmental negative mm -hmm. impacts, okay, these companies do not actually also live up to their corporate social responsibilities mm -hmm. appropriately. Right. And I think that it comes back to the basic fact that we must engage in these things. You see, to engage in the exploitation, so if you mm -hmm. like the extractions of these things, mm -hmm. it's not bad in my opinion. It's not bad at, at all. But so long as, wait a moment, so long as it yields to the greater good but of the people. But where rules are because set, as rules are talking set about, as prerequisites, yes, I will based on that. which you agree to extract yes. and to allow for the, the fragrance to spread over the people, and you extract, you take all the perfume, and you vanish. Well, I wish, that, that, I, wish I wish I had a smooth sail in my argument. No, no, I, okay. but I need, to, I, uh, I need to ask you questions. I, is, you is are, I, you is, are actually asking questions that are in tandem with the direction of my argument. Well, but if... if and you, I'm saying that all that, these things you are saying does there's not disqualify... There's no time to have 15 minutes yes, of conversation. Yes, all these things you are saying does not disqualify a nation or a government from going into, you know, the uh, business of... Extracting Nobody said that. I'm asking, how do we so make it better? So the point I am making is that mm. we cannot run away from the environmental and ecological impact these things make. How do we make how it better? How they affect the climate mm. change, okay, and affect the agriculture industry are issues we cannot do away without. They are negative issues that are affecting mm. the country. But let us not also forget that, like we said, it contributes to job creation, it contributes to our economic bottom mm. lines. So the fundamental issue 
we should be talking about here is how we must get the regulatory institutions, the regulatory regime must be in such a manner that we are able to enforce that they hold these companies accountable to what is right and proper mm -hmm. within the domestic laws of our country. That is what we must focus on doing. J the EPA and the mm -hmm. others, as Bonfair, mm -hmm. you know, spoke about, seem to be a little low in the execution of their tax. So what we must be doing is to make sure that with the power we have within <laughs> us as a people, mm -hmm. we exert same in making sure that institutions of state, mm -hmm. i.e. the EPA, okay, are mm -hmm. able to live up to their mandate, are able to hold these companies accountable to be able to perform in a manner as agreed. Like you said, the PR have exposed, at least on the surface of it, what is intended to be done. So we have the moral basis to be able to hold companies reprehensible if their acts and conduct points otherwise. So this is the argument I am making, that it is a dependency issue. We cannot run away from the fact that mm. whether we like it or not, we will engage in issues like this to be able in our development effort. Okay. We must do that. And I do not see anything particularly wrong with that. Mm. The caution we must take from the advice people and civil society mm. is pouring in is to actually make sure that institutions of state responsible for the regulatory regime in respect of mm. extractive sector are able to take they, key they steps say, they to say ensure the sanctity of the ecology. It's too that dangerous. It. Don't go there. Don't go there because it will destroy the forest. Don't go there because it will destroy the lives of the people. Uh, leave, no. it, leave it as it is. The resources... I disagree with that argument because if appropriately <coughs> bridled, mm. and that is why I am emphasizing that we must channel efforts in making sure that the regulatory regimes works. If appropriately bridled, it yields and culminates into a situation that helps, than okay. a situation that destroys. And that is the argument okay. here. But, Mr. Chumbo, it is rhetoric to think that we shouldn't do that. It is rhetoric to think that we should let the resources be there. Whilst we have pressing social issues, while we have joblessness in the system, who makes this argument? But, it doesn't happen anyway. Mr. Chumbo, for step in for me, what would an NDC government have done if faced with this situation? You have natural resource, CSO says, don't touch it because in the past we have not touched it right and it has not affected the people well. You as a government say, look, I see opportunity that will create jobs that will better the lives of the people. I'm going for it. What would an NDC government have done? Well, what I can tell you is that an NDC government would never have entered the Antiwa Forest. I I'm listening to the flowery talk by Elvis, and I'm, I'm very surprised that he's saying that because he knows the history of this country when it comes to enforcing regulations. Mm. Look, that forest is a World Heritage Site. It has been there for millions of years. Yeah. We in this generation have no, absolutely no business destroying that very fragile ecology mm. that exists. You see, when you destroy nature, it comes back to bite you in several ways. We, 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 are, we, are, we are forgetting to look mm. at the history of the extractive services, uh, the extractive industry mm. in this country. Mm. Like uh, um, uh, Kabila said, Kabila, and you're yeah. calling him James, and I'm surprised I've even forgotten his <laughs> name. Like Kabila said, <laughs> what is the history? Yeah. Name one, mm. one place that the, the extractive uh, industry has benefited the people. Mm. Obuasi, given its history, mm. should be the richest, country, the richest um, um, city in Africa. Yeah. Is it really? Are there even roads in Obuasi? Mm. As we speak today, isn't the whole place dusty? If you go to Obwasi today and you come back, you you will look all red. Yeah. Why is that? Because over the over the past years um, and, and decades, mm -hmm. what has happened is that the extraction <coughs> has gone on, the exploitation has gone on, mm -hmm. but the regeneration that is supposed to be part of that exploitative process has never happened. Are we suggesting that because regulation has failed, uh, because enforcement has failed, we must not uh, aspire to, to desire and What we and must deal aspire with it? to do is to leave this nation in the manner in which it was given to us. 
that is the the foremost thing we should do mm. ask him and and look i don't want to i don't i don't mean i don't want this to come out the wrong way okay but we have a horrible record with galamse in this country a terrible record mm. with a certain particular group of foreigners coming into this country not being given permission to even enter this country god knows how they enter this place <laughs> and before we realize they have an army um in in some hinterland somewhere and they're exploiting our resources mm. these same people are now coming back in conglomerate form <clears throat> it is very dangerous i i can understand why the government will want to do this because they've made so many promises they can't keep they need money to, to fund it is that, is that it as simple as that oh absolutely that's that's you the bottom line respond. you need you need no you don't have to respond you know that's <laughs> the truth you need to we need to go beyond mm. that because otherwise one day we'll, see, we'll even be selling our children if because we need money look the etiwa forest mm. is a very very delicate ecological environment i would have wished mm. that the government hadn't gotten involved in what they're doing another thing that many people haven't spoken about. When it comes to the exploitation of, of, of um, heavy um, um, mm. metals like, like aluminium, okay. the way to, to transport it is via rail. Right. These people are going to be loading trucks and they are going to be traveling on our roads. Do you know what is going to happen? Mr. Zaza says they're working. That's why the, the, the improvement is happening within the real sector. And it is because they, no, of that. Everything that you hear from this government is, that is why we are. That is why we are. They have never come out and said, that is why we have. They should tell us mm. that they actually have plans to put a real link between Tema and the Tewa Forest. You can't do this and put it on our roads. The accidents. I mean, already they haven't filled a single pothole since they came to power. Now what they came to me, they are going to come and destroy. You see, these things are things that we should sit down. It is not for this generation, mm -hmm. our generation, to destroy what we came to meet. Why? Do you think that the generations before us didn't know that the Tiwa Forest had bauxite? It will create jobs. That's what they are saying. What jobs? 30, how, many people, how many people from Obwasi, Pristia, Takwa, Univali, Kenyasi, all the places you know, mm. yeah. how many of them have, have benefited? How many of them? Name me one person but, but who you, has a but job you that do, you can But you do know about? that this is also tied in with That's the Sino-Hydro deal. Uh, and yesterday, even though Dr. Gideon Buaku from the vice president office says there's, the Chinese have no interest in our bauxite and aluminium, uh, I, I, I take exception to that anyway, but I, I'm not supposed to have an opinion. But the connection between the Sino Hydro, the uh, roads that have been promised to be constructed in 2020, and this now argument that should we go, should we not go, and with even GIADEC promising that, look, we're going to engage all the stakeholders to make sure that there's consistent communication, there's consistent enforcement, consistent regulation. You, you still Tony, have doubts. Is the flowery talk I'm talking about. What is the history? You see, I, I have this saying that my brother Sam George loves to repeat. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and follows his mother in straight lines and messes about everywhere he goes, it's a duck. There's absolutely no way mm. that all the talk about reg regulation is going to happen. What is the size of the EPA? Do you know how many people are employed at the EPA? Mm. And those EPA people are going to go and stand before the Sino-Hydro uh, um, people in Etiwa Forest and tell them you are doing the wrong thing, so pack up and go <clears throat> or stop working. I mean, and, and another thing. Yeah. We all know Finally. that there is, there is a lot of bribery and corruption when it comes to enforcement. Look, we are putting, and I, I, uh, I, I want to take off my, my political hat for a moment. Okay. We are putting the lives and times of a large majority of our people at risk. Okay. Okay. There's a saying in Chi. Enko 
Because to, these to, things... To wait, loosely to translated. Wait, don't go to the source of the river, mess it up, and then come to... Um, the, the bank downstream. of the river come downstream, downstream and okay. say and the, the who, river is who is messing up the river <coughs> because <coughs> the Etiwa forest is a source for one of our biggest rivers in this country. In fact, three rivers run through it. The Daisy River runs through it. They are going well. to go yeah. and mess it up, and the people they are sending there have absolutely no qualms about messing up your environment. Okay, uh, James, take one minute. Johnny. Elvis, take one no, minute. No, Kabila. No, 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 number, number one, mm. when you talk about jobs associated with the extractive sector, Why? you must understand that they are highly technical jobs mm. that the local people living in these enclaves do not have the capacity to. Yesterday he spoke about training. I'm he said, oh, please, please, please. spoke about please, training. Please. I work in this industry. But he said there will be My training. NGO source funds to go and give livelihood, alternative, alternative livelihood empowerment program for your youth in Salman. Because they needed something to, to, to live on and not go astray. So that's an important point to make. Mm. The other point to make so, is so this. So the, the concept of training means nothing <coughs> to you? The point I'm making is that is it, it is not going to be part of the component. You see, this is a rehash of a discussion that has been ongoing for years. Right. The truth of the matter is that Check the contractual agreements that are being signed, whether there's anything training of the young people in those communities as part of it and how they have lived up to them. Okay. Another important point I want to make is this. You see, there's politics involved in this whole thing. How so? The, the funds or the companies that are bringing whatever investment they are bringing in are coming from nations of the global north okay. who have weight, who have power mm. and control and any time they are having challenges to do with local people, mm. they run to the, the governments of the global South nations, okay. who, when they have not been able to enforce law and order to mm. protect them, mm. okay, against the people, the citizenry, mm. call on their nations to come to their aid. They have promised local participation and no fronting. Johnny, I'm telling and you no that fronting. there is nothing new that is being said as you have put out here. And I'm giving you evidence. I'm telling you what I was told. Now let me show you something more. And this one I heard from a very big mining giant. Okay. These companies come and no Ghanaian owns a share in their companies. They, that is one of the big drivers of our economy. Mm. The extractive sector. And it is one of the reasons why our economy every now and then receives the shocks that it gets. Mm. Whatever money they make, they fly it out of our system. After they have caused so much mess to our system. Okay. In land, in R water, R wrap up for me. among the people, and even the air that we breathe. It's important to make this point. And Johnny, perhaps maybe... Finally. The, yeah, the last point I want to make is this. You know, at the end of the day, mm. our natural resource endowments do not belong to just the living. In our African philosophy and thinking, we are three who share in that endowment. The dead, the living, and the yet to be born. Okay. We, the living, are in the minority. We are only one third. We cannot, mm. we cannot do things to the disadvantage of the two the two tests who are in majority. We should be mindful of okay. that. Okay, Elvis. Yes, uh, Mr. Chumbafu says, number yeah. one, look, you have promised so much, you don't have money to do it, so you have to go and destroy <laughs> what has been left for you. <laughs> to, Perhaps to, I should say this, be, I should say this to, to, to Elvis. To be able to, to Elvis, there is no history anywhere in the world of any exploited land that has been reclaimed. There's no one, one, one reclamation that has been successfully done all over the world. If there's a history, someone should tell me. Yesterday, we were showed a video of the Jara Forest that looks like it's been reclaimed. It's not true. I'm saying, I'm only reporting <laughs> what I was told. Elvis, quickly, take take two minutes and respond uh, to me because... Well, I was listening to Chumbuafu and I, I, I was surprised at his arguments in respect of this matter, which espouses, uh, though ungrounded theoretical postulations as he, he, he sought to have put out, which government is more committed to the fight in respect of ecological and environmental protection than the, NDC, than the NPP government. The NDC 
under your watch. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had Galamse operating and spoiling all the water bodies. The same at what Forest is here talking about mm -hmm. was almost being doled out by your president. As that, as that, as that, that's justify, you are, you are, are so, 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 no, so focused can I, can I, on that. No, I'm not so focused. Protection I did not, I did not make a I didn't make an argument even on I'll give you a chance to. I raised an argument on moral basis and you have brought yourself. JM, His Excellency John Dremani Mama, almost doled out the same Etowah Forest to his brother Ibrahim Mama. What is the NDC telling us? That was why he was voted out. And he was being voted out. And another government that come out. That is factually incorrect. Another government. No, let me have my Allow me. Allow me. Allow me. Allow me. Allow me. Allow me. Please. Another government have come up to give this out on grounds of terms and agreement that will yield to the ultimate good of the people and you're here arguing the, about the majority it. are talking saying about no, railways it, it, it is not talking working about for a transport system Elvis, which government re respond to is this. more Elvis, appropriately to committed to the development Elvis, of the rail sector than the NPP. Elvis, slow His down. Is slow down. Well respond to this. Let's be factual. Uh, nearly everybody is saying. But you have been non-factual. Don't go there. I am. You have been non-factual. No, Presidents no. don't oh, give Allow me. Allow me. That's allow me. true. Allow me. Allow me. We will go to the Minerals Commission. But I'm saying that nearly everybody is saying don't go there. Will you listen? We will take heed to that advice only under conditions that takes us away from the practical advantage in going there. But government has a responsibility to make sure that things work for the good of the people. And I am saying that the current arguments being made are frivolous. They are not practical. Tell me one government that I've done as they sought to postulate. And I'm saying that his government is the worst in the comment. If at all these kind of issues are criminal, mm -hmm. if they are not good, his government is the worst who have done nothing, no single policy in respect of this. My government, the NPP government and the His Excellency, have done so well in making sure that issues about the extractive sector do not affect the ecology. And your government is actually doing campaign with this Galancia issue. And I'm saying that they had plans. The NDC and the JM had plans to do worse with the Etua Forest. They wouldn't and have I'm gone saying there. that to conclude on this particular mm. note, it is also not true, okay, for one to sit here on this platform to assert that because of transportation inefficiencies, right. no one should do this. Which government is committed to the development of rail? As I'm talking to you, the president have just engaged and launch a project for a 91 narrow gauge rail project connecting all the way to Chebi. So it's not as if government <laughs> does not understand what is happening. And you government made, does not take into consideration. No, because they do not have a position on this matter. And viewers are watching, Ghanaians are seeing the hypocrisy of the NDC in respect of this. But you know what? We are going to remain very focused. We will take moral advices such as those Bonfair started with mm. and i maintain i'm not only we'll, making moral arguments we'll make sure that economic we we'll make sure arguments. that those kind of issues in respect of what institutions of state must do mm. to minimize the peril of these activities let us take note we cannot have a hundred percent situation where there will not be adverse effects of this kind of thing we will take this kind of advices and make sure that the matter moves in a manner that culminates into social and economic gains for this country that is why we were voted for the Total okay. economic and social reconstruction of this so, so you say, and we will do so that. You say so you say you this issue. So, so you're saying you won't, these you won't back down. No, we're not backing okay. down. Okay. Uh, could you, if you, unless you don't no, have me, uh, me, a rebuttal. No, 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 me, no, 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 but you, you've had all your rebuttals. No, 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 no. And on he, the job, it must be, and on the recruitment, it must just be people from the Etiwa area who are recruiting. Let's allow Kujo. Let's allow Kujo. Let's allow Kujo to have his bite and then. I am, I'm, I, I would have wished that you hadn't gone there. The secretary to your Galamse uh, uh, committee Charles Bessie. was caught on TV collecting bribes. And you talk about commitment. As, as we speak now, what has happened? What, 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 what action has your government taken? I would have wished you hadn't gone there. Under your government, a military officer was murdered in defense of, uh, of your so-called protection, uh, uh, your, your project on Galamse. That's the thing you're that talking about. That's and and that is your policy. Allah. Charles hmm? Bissu, oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, everything is illegal, everything is illegal, I hope you haven't justified the legion of the job at some point, let's not denigrate the position of government, let's let me finish, Elvis, let me finish, if you want to, no, you were interjecting when I was talking, you didn't want, you didn't want me to speak, you didn't want to, if you want it, we can do it, no, 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 we won't do it, Kujo, right, so let me, I said, your policy on Galamse is Charles Bissu, 
What a wonderful policy. I was wishing that you wouldn't you, go there. You don't see you Irish in town life. Because the position okay. is okay. vanguard. Allow me to do my work. The only opposition. The only opposition. The only opposition. The only opposition. The system of that. The only opposition. The education that I am making here. The only opposition. You want to go to parliament. This is how you want to go to parliament. How am I behaving? So, with all respect, he did say. Allow him. And I got to allow your platform to be used to federal issues. I said, do not do that. Do not do that. Um, Johnny, you made a sweeping statement that John Muhammad gave concessions. I said, don't do that, Johnny. Do not do that. Johnny, Allow let, him to have let space. Me, let Everybody me, will have space. Let, we'll, let me go. We treat our viewers with decorum. John Muhammad, let's, um, let's just assume, let's just assume, and it is totally false that John Muhammad gave a concession to his brother, Mr. Ibrahim Muhammad. He said Ghanaian. Ibrahim Muhammad. He said Ghanaian. His business started thriving before the NDC came to power. Unlike some of the people that you people have empowered, your family and friends, and I can go, I can go through the 65 people that you, uh, are the, are the um, friends and family of the president that are in government and are benefiting from business in this country. Unlike, unlike them, Ibrahim Mahama was working way before them. Operation Vanguard if means Ibrahim nothing to Mahama, you. Ibrahim Mahama ex employs thousands of people in this country. He mm. has done so for a very long time. Mm. So when you sit here and try to denigrate him because he's the president's brother, do we want to start that? You see, no, there, there, there's somewhere you don't want to go. Okay. Operation Vanguard has been set up by this government to fire Galamse. It means nothing to you? Operation everything means something to everybody. What it means to this government is another thing altogether. What does it mean to them? I, I don't know. Because they have, they have done nothing that you can point to and say this is a, the only result that they have is a murdered military officer. The only result that they have is the secretary to the committee caught on TV taking bribes. That is their record. And as we speak today, nothing has happened. Okay. Thank you. Has a single person been co co convicted for killing Major Mahama? Johnny? The, the, the matter is in Johnny, court, Johnny, I understand. Johnny. No, 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 I, I, it's okay. No, no, I, I, I just want no, to No, 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 thank you. Uh, you no, no, you no, won't no, say we, anything. No, no, please. 020-216663, no, 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 that's our WhatsApp line. Join us. James, Camilla, your phone is off. Camilla, your microphone is off. Let's go, to, yeah. let's go to the quarters this of the Electoral like, Commission. We need uh, they set up, they set up a committee, a committee that will a uh, superintend over some, some sections of the EC's operations. Take a look at this quickly. When we return, we'll have a conversation about that. The committee, which comprises heads of religious groups and other respected persons in society, is chaired by former Shraj boss Emil Short, with the former president of the Ghana Journalists Association, Gifty Afenidazi, as deputy. Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Jane Mensah, said the committee is to ensure Ghanaians directly experience the EC's new approach in maintaining an open door that responds to citizens' interest. She tasked the committee members to offer feedback from the constituencies that they represent and speak up as well. Members of the committee will be expected to carry out the following tasks build an understanding of the operations of the Electoral Commission, follow the Electoral Commission's activities in the lead up to national elections, attend meetings of the committee to hear and deliberate upon the decisions and planned actions of the Electoral Commission, utilize their societal platforms to educate their social groupings on actions of the Electoral Commission. The meetings of the committee would be held at least once every two months. Other meetings may be called as and when the need arises. Meetings would be guided by an agenda and followed with minutes. The committee will also engage with stake key stakeholders periodically. She said the commission is putting in place systems and structures to ensure credible elections, adding officials are determined to be fair, transparent and accessible to all. The chairman, Emil Short, said the committee will conduct its activities with excellence.
<laughs> Welcome back. So that's the committee that has been set up. I don't know. Uh, could you let me start with you on this one? The committee has been set up. Does it change anything about the public perception of the EC's uh, work going into 2020? Um, Looking at the personalities, there. Before, before I go there. No, no, I beg I, you, please. Okay, let, okay. Let's not when go. I let's, finish, I'll ask you let's, that let's question. Let's go. You see, the, the, it, in, in, in the minds of many people, mm. this is just a maneuver to get around IPAC. Really? Yes. In the minds of many people. Mm. This committee is completely unnecessary. Mm. And I really wish that we get to a point where the so-called members of some of these committees say to the government, we don't want to be on it. There are so many people on that committee. Would, would, they, would they fit in a room? Would they fit in a room? Count them. How many are they? Would they fit in any room and have a meeting? But most importantly, was it not Justice Emil Short who was asked to superintend the IOWAS uh, Wagon, Wagon Committee? committee? Mm -hmm. Commission. 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 Sorry. What happened to his recommendations? The same government that will not take his recommendations, appoint him to go and superintend yet another commission. This was the electoral. This is the electoral commission's appointment. Oh. Oh, this is not the government's Elvis appointment. Elvis was speaking about the political system. No, 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 no. But this, I, no, but, but this one, this one is an advisory I mean, commission. I'm asking. I pack. Allow me. This is an advisory listen, committee I set up by Johnny, the electoral commission. Johnny, yeah, Johnny. Mm. That com that advisory committee is unnecessary. I pack. Is a, a body <laughs> that has the interest of the premier actors in an election already. Mm. As far as many, uh, uh, even neutral observers are concerned, mm. this is a maneuver around IPAC. Because we have had so many um, uh, reports mm. of IPAC being denigrated by the people in charge of the EC today. Mm. I don't want to go into, go, go, go into specifics. We all know the stories. I'm asking the question. How many are, are, are those people? What, like about 22 of them? Mm, 21. 21. Mm. Would they fit into a room and have a meeting? Why would they fit into a room? A have, you been to a room with 20 have you been to a meeting with 21 people before? That's Parli it. That's Parliament it has 275 people. They don't meet. They legislate. Right. They don't go to a meeting. That their subcommittees. They have, don't go to have yes, members. Subcommittee. You right. see, subcommittee. Mm. These are people that you are putting together, who have absolutely no wherewithal when it comes to when it comes to the elections. You know that for IPAC. Oh, <laughs> Kabila Maminka <laughs> said. IPAC. Once again, I'm saying that <laughs> IPAC mm. is a body. Well, but but if you look at the personalities in there, with all apologies to the that is the that is the that's exactly the problem. It's 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 a committee of personalities. But the personalities have experience. They have track record. IPAC. They have done something before. Everybody has a they track record. They are statesmen. We all have one vote. Everybody has a track record. Kofi Mensa and Kwame and uh, uh, Yamansa. All of them. So what you say is that it's not necessary. The committee is not necessary. IPAC. IPAC has been doing that. Mm with a lot of with consensus mm. across the political divide for a long time okay this for me and for many neutral observers mm. i'm not saying by any means neutral it's a maneuver to get around our back like i'm saying okay i don't know what advice and let me let me just encapsulate what i'm saying okay i don't know what i uh, uh, advice mm. that this committee is going to give the ec that i pack you are give preempting them. No, no, uh, I'm saying I don't know. What advice are they going to give? You said they have a, uh, what do you say? They have track a track record. record and IPAC doesn't, have a, IPAC doesn't have a track record. Or are we having a, a, a duality of advices? Which of them is more preeminent? Okay. <coughs> Elvis, take a bite. Do you share the same uh, thoughts? Or no, you I take definitely don't okay. share the same thoughts. Okay. You know I will not I, share I, the same thoughts. He never will. I will not. If I say he shares his, share, his blue, you will say that. You see, we must be fair mm. with our politics in this country. Mm. I will not agree one okay. bit mm. with you. You may have your reservations in respect of the committee. Mm. But you see, as institutions grow mm. day in and day out, yep. institutions are organisms. 
Mm -hmm. We must be able to support them with the needed oxygen required to grow. Mm -hmm. And one of them, in the wisdom of the EC, he kept saying, the government, the government, no, that is wrong. I'm telling you that this was not a committee set forth by government. It is a committee set forth I've, by the I've EC. mentioned that already. And, uh, so let's make progress, and, uh, make your points. Also, to say that it is a step which they think that will help improve upon their internal you know, mechanism in the discharge right. of their duties. Mm. And really also remember that that particular body is key mm. to tranquility in this country when it comes to, you know, our electioneering process and the mm -hmm. stability of the economy matters. You were also talking about the numerics of the committee. Speak, speak, okay? speak to your, speak and to I'm your saying issues. That, don't, don't take... Yes, and I'm saying that the numerics, I also think... No, you were asking whether I shared in his opinion. Right. And I said no. Okay. And I'm giving so, reasons. So, so let me ask you... For what, what, okay, let me change the opinion. question. What, what, okay? what would this no, change? Don't, what don't would change this the committee question. change? I will come to that. The, what the committee is changing, mm. like I mentioned, is to make sure that, you know, the internal mechanisms mm. of EC operates. Because EC is central to the attainment of tranquility in our electioneering process. Mm. And if you look at the manner in which the committee have been structured with people with very varied experiences mm. and avalanche of knowledge in respect of public affairs, mm. I think that it is a good step. Okay. Let us ensure that it doesn't become a talking committee. Okay. Let us ensure that it doesn't become, you know, a, you know a lunch or happen. a tea committee. You know but that's what's going to Beyond happen. that, they should make meaningful contributions and let the Ghanaian people feel the impact. Kojo, Kojo says this is okay. just to go around IPAC. It's, it's not to go around IPAC. To I, I don't think it's, it has anything to go around IPAC because IPAC also serves as an essential stakeholder in the affairs of the EC. Okay. That does not take away mm. or minus, you know, the fact that we should take more prudent steps mm. to enhancing. We've always had IPAC, yet we have a lot of challenges okay. with Thank internal you. conduct of Thank you. Thank you. So this argument, Kabila, 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 you are yeah. acting general secretary of a political party. Uh, tell me, do you, you do you feel that this is to take down IPAC, and what would this change? Well, first of all, for anybody to even think or assume mm. that there is a possibility of sidestepping the Interparty Advisory Committee, mm. IPAC, which has come to stay, would mean you have no understanding of what IPAC is and the history it has gone through. Mm. It's not possible. Could you? So please, you need to revise your notes on that. No, no, no one... I, I didn't tell you that that is possible. I said that's the intention. But I'm saying that's the intention. So what I said. Then it's a dead yeah, intention on arrival. Uh, well, uh, well, I hope so. I hope so. Okay, so allow Now, two. This is not the first time the Electoral Commission is setting up a committee Absolutely. to advise it. Mm. The Colossus Afrijan, Dr. Kujo Afrijan, I sat, I sat on one of those committees, the Reform Committee. After the 2012, uh, 2013, the first ever presidential election petition, mm -hmm. I will agree with Kojo that the number 21 mm. looks on a high side to me. It's unwieldy. Please, please. I'm saying that. I may agree with you mm -hmm. that the number 21 is on the high side. Okay. But Kodo, you need to be mindful of one thing. Election, though a specialized area, is not one specific area. Election relates to security. It mm. relates to economics. Mm. It re relates to budgeting. Yeah. It, re it relates to project planning, mm. management. It relates to security. It relates to IT. It relates to technical, I mean, social uh, communication mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So, and it, it, I mean, particularly, it runs on law. Right. Law. Because the whole election process is a creature of law. Exactly. So, you, you, so, see, you so, see that in the committee. So, so I, I haven't, let me be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the committee. Okay. And I'm disappointed that the Electoral Commission met us two days ago. Mm -hmm. We had an IPAC meeting. And we were not told as political parties. Of course, I'm disappointed, but that is me. Mm. They are not obliged to tell us. But this was even in, the, though in, the, it, in the news. This was public. I'm notice. saying I didn't know. I okay. didn't know. It, this There's is, no official communication this is, this from is, the EC to Yes, you. yes, yes. Okay. And, and, and you see, to, I, I, I'm, I'm not faulting them. I'm saying that it would have only been fair that once we met them and they were going to do this, it would have, it would have been fair for us. But that's the amount to faulting them. I'm saying that, you see, there are things that are not legally required, mm. but it is only fair that you do that okay. for relationship purposes. Right. And I can understand why they did that. And that is in Article 46. 
and uh, it says, except as provided in this constitution mm. or in any other law not inconsistent with this constitution, okay. in the performance of its functions, mm. the electoral commission shall not be subject to the direction or control of any person or authority. Mm. So they are at liberty to do what they did. Okay. And could you to um, allay your fears? We're, we're, we're wrapping up. Mm. The electoral commission is not bound by any advice that will be given by this committee. And at the end of the day, I believe that whatever decisions they want to take, they will bring it to us. Could you say exactly my point? Could you say something? And to assure you that I work. Kabila, could you say which of the advices will be senior to the other? Will it be for the advice of the advisory committee as set up the 21, or would EC be more receptive to the advice of IPAC? That's what Kojo is asking. That. Well, I, Look, I, if you I, have two advisors, no, 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 you listen no, no, to? no, no, no. This is not. Don't even equate this committee setup to IPAC. To IPAC. It's, not. it's not. Johnny, it's Kabila, not. It cannot Kabila be. Kabila has made my point. You see, I should have kept no, quiet and listened to you. You said you went for a meeting two days ago. They didn't tell you. Yes. Okay. And I'm saying and that they are not sure that. But I'm not, saying that they, they are not obliged. obliged. They were not obliged to tell us. Wait. I'm yeah, only saying that um, it may sound inconsistent, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not contradicting myself. Kabila. Kabila, yes. everybody party, knows yeah. that EC watching. is not obliged. In fact, they are not obliged to do anything. Right? They are obliged to do certain yeah. things. Wait, yeah. wait, they are not obliged to do anything yet. It was the same EC that was about, that that was about okay. to hold a referendum. We, we Nobody wanted to, to, to We got to go. go. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, that's not true. One hour has happened. Yes, one hour has happened. That's not true. We have actually done 8 But Johnny, we should be mindful how we tend Sometimes to run the EC down just because we don't like certain person. Who is running the EC down? I'm, no, saying, I'm, saying, I'm giving a caution to Ghanaians. Who, who is I'm giving a caution to Ghanaians. Who is running the EC down? Okay, for me, I am on the I'm on the side of the electoral commission. I think, I constitutionally think mandated somebody, somebody, to run elections. Somebody, I somebody will say. Somebody will say. Who ran? Yes. Who ran down the EC? I think we know that. It's a caution. It's a caution. It's a caution. Somebody, somebody, somebody will say. Kabila, you, you have direct contact to the EC. You don't need to sit on TV to say you were not told about this committee, but you could have called the EC commissioner to ask. But he also said. EC I'm saying so, so, no, no, somebody no, will listen, say listen. somebody will say that's talking about to running down the EC. Uh, oh no, no it is. But I think I explain myself. <laughs> okay, you are entitled to your opinion, but I explain myself mm -hmm. that we were at an IPAC meeting. Okay, in the the, the evening was when this statement, the uh, uh, right. uh, television station, right. you will come and confess to me one. No, 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 that, no, no, no. Okay. this committee Thank cannot you. undermine IPAC. But the Kojo Trump is a formal executive secretary of the Free Zones Board. He's joined us here on the ticket of the NDC. Also, Elvis Bota wants to go to Parliament on the ticket of the people of uh, Nadoli Kalio uh, up there in the north. Uh, he has been here on the ticket of the NPP as well. And Mr. James Kravina Bonfe, he is the acting general secretary of the Conversion People's Party. He's popularly known as Kabila. And uh, this is where we, uh, we draw the curtains. But it's day 29 since I began the release the ambulance campaign here. 29 days on and nobody has attempted to move the ambulances. And I've told you before, that earlier in February, the folks from Mercedes-Benz were here to tell us that the ambulances are fit for purpose from the factory. So the fact that we are going to fix the uh, scanners and uh, GPS and blah, 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 and everything else, train drivers, over 2,000 and excess of paramedics have been trained from Kenkaso. So they've also graduated. And I, I, I'm looking for the next excuse that will come as to why the ambulances have not been released. In the meantime, this morning, somebody will be in dire need of an ambulance and will die wrongfully because we have parked the ambulances at the forecourt of parliament. And we say we're waiting for a ceremony. We're waiting for all 307 to come. Ghana Bay Yeni, Mr. President, good morning to you. I beg you, and I'll beg you every morning until you make the ambulances move because you promised that you're going to release the ambulances to the constituencies. The ambulances have come. I see no reason why you should pack them there, Mr. President. It will be unfair, most unfortunate. It will be absolutely disingenuous. It will be backward if they continue sitting there while people keep dying. 
Speak with your health minister who is also MP for Dorma Central. Speak with your minister for special initiatives who is also MP for Senior Breku. Tell them, order them to move the ambulances now.